So the golf wedge hasn't evolved with the times according to the manufacturer that I'm testing today. But is this club an innovation sensation or literally something which nobody has asked for? So these are the Mod 1 wedges from More Golf, and they've been designed to meet the needs of the modern game, which is essentially still the same it has been for 400 years. So not many people have actually tested out these wedges. I got them through earlier on this year, but I've only just got around to testing them. I know Rick has done a video on these already, and I was also due to be doing a video on the full set of irons, which got held up in customs because they cost so much money. $427 per club, per club. <laughs> Just to put that in perspective, some of the clubs I've been testing this year, the Sub 70, for example, the Haywoods, you can literally get a full set of irons for that price of one of these clubs. So this better perform like nothing I've ever tested before for that type of cash. And while I'm testing these wedges, guys, we're almost at 500,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel. Would love you to be part of the community and help us reach that milestone. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and please hit that bell icon as well so you're notified of future videos. And invite your friends and family, neighbors. If you live in an apartment block, go to everybody. And part of this video, I'm gonna be testing these wedges on the GC quad against some other premium clubs to see if there is actually a difference. Now, this is one of the most interesting parts of the Mod 1 wedges. I've got a 54 and a 50 degree to try. So I've actually unscrewed the head. So this screw comes out, the whole club head detaches. And then what you can also do is detach the bottom of the club. More golf call these flanges. And these come in a universal, which is this little U, a narrow and a wide. And apparently this is so when you play different conditions, you can just interchange the sole of the club. Oh, that's occupational assets. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't be doing that on my back. And what this also means is you could change the club head as well when these grooves and quite unique club face start to wear out. It is a pretty special looking face, it has to be said. The kind of face that you would expect to generate a lot of spin. And maybe that is what makes it a little bit more fit for the modern age, you know. You wouldn't have to replace the whole club, but it's expensive, man so expensive. I quite like the idea of being able to change the sole for different conditions, but I think for a lot of golfers, it'd just be a faff. I mean, get down into those comments below. Would you buy a wedge and then buy different soles that you could attach? It almost feels like it's coming up with an answer to a problem which isn't really an issue for a lot of golfers. In the shots I've been hitting around the green, I have to say that there is a difference between the soles though. The narrow sole, which I've got on the 54, which I'm gonna be doing most of the testing with, it is noticeably more bitey through the turf than this universal sole, which flows through a little bit more. And you can see there is a greater degree of bounce angle on this universal sole. So this is a wedge straight away for me that would really appeal to the golf nerd and something which would also appeal to the golf nerd is this hosel. So the hosel is made of a really lightweight aerospace material so you could actually fly with this. And what that does, it saves about 50 grams and actually repositions weight in the head. So more golf say they can control spin, adding more, you know, and also make this club more accurate. Now this isn't a new innovation. I remember TaylorMade, I think it was on the M2, 2016 version, I believe. They introduced a fluted hosel and that was the same thing. So taking weight from the hosel and reposition it around the head. So it's not super innovative, but it has been done before by other manufacturers. By the way, how uh, good do these balls look? <laughs> so this is the Shrixen Q-Star Tour Divide version. It's called Divide because the ball is divided into two sections. So there's a lot of claims being made about this club. I have to say the feel off the face is actually really good. And I don't know if it's just because I'm using these golf balls, but it feels like the spin is absolutely massive. And from the shots I've already hit this morning, I'm actually quite impressed. Am I 
$430 impressed, I'm not sure yet. So let's test out some of these claims, shall we? I've got my 54 degree Vokey here going up against the 54 degree Mod 1. And the first little test we're going to do is just over a standard chip and run. So I've got to chip it about halfway up the green and then let it release out. But we're going to be looking at the data that the quad delivers. So ball position, just back a little bit, hand slightly ahead. Just a very standard kind of chip pitch up onto the green, rolling out, going first time. It's not too bad. Now backspin there, 1,769. Launch angle at 32.5 degrees. Carry 14 yards. So that came out a little bit lower. 2,124 spin, carry it 13 yards. Launch angle 31 degrees. That's a bit more energy into it. I like the look of that one. Go on. I appreciate that one more. Backspin there, 2,636. So I hit that a little bit harder and carried it a little bit further. So maximum two six there. The first one was at one seven. And that's what I'm gonna try and repeat here with the first one on the mod wedge. So back in the stance, hands ahead a little bit. So your standard kind of chip and run. And it does feel and sound a bit different. I mean, that was again, very, very similar to what we did with the Vokey. Backspin there, 2,834. Four. So that's already higher, and that was probably the low spinning -est version of that shot. So next up, ball goes a little bit further forward, just like the Vokey. Pops it up just a touch more. I'll tell you what, in some decent shots there. Backspin at 2364, so again, quite high. So we move this one a little bit further forward, just get a little bit more loft. Stopping quick. I tell you what, it's a great collection of shots there. Backspin there, 3,085. Launch angle at 36 degrees, carry 18. So early indications would show much more spin with this funky face. So 40 yards here. We'll switch it up a little bit. We'll go mod one first. So what are we carrying this about? Probably 37, because it's going to spin a lot at the front of this green, I think. Oh yeah, one pitch and a big stop. I have to say the um, feeling off this wedge is really, really good. It feels solid. Backspin there, 5,269. Too bad from this kind of distance. Again, I'll move the ball slightly further forward. So it had a little bit more lofted impact. Oh, stop it. So fast that. 4,378. Oh wow, that's a that's a big pull back. Might, might have been a bit tight on that one. 4,774, so some decent averages there. Now onto the Vokey. This is where we'll start to see the differences come in. Wow, that launched so much higher. I don't know if I just hit it harder or not. 3,566 backspin. It's definitely launching higher. 4,000 backspin, so not quite as high. I've obviously had this wedge for a bit as well. The mod is brand new. Yeah, there's a definite difference there, as far as launch is concerned. 37.6 degrees compared to kind of 34 with the mod. Backspin 2,800. So you can see the definite difference there between the two hosel locations. The mod one's basically halfway up the face and the Vogue is a more traditional teardrop design. As far as the looks of these wedges go, even though the Mod 1 is noticeably more futuristic, I don't actually mind the look of it. I think it looks quite functional, but if you were to ask me which one of these wedges I would prefer in my bag, just purely from aesthetics, it's definitely still the Vokey. But if aesthetically it's not as nice as some of the other wedges out there, then it's all about performance. So we're sitting on the chip shots, the more one spinning more on the quad, but then also visually flighted that little bit lower and also grabbing a little bit more. So we're gonna test out a couple more of the central claims out of the thick rough and then out of the bunker and then have some pitches, big pitches. So as a club goes into the rough, what people say, I'm not actually seeing any proper research into this, but I'm guessing it's true, is that the grass wraps around the hosel and flips the club over. 
Now, because the Mod 1 hosel is removed a little bit, apparently this cuts through the roof easier than a Vokey would. I, I trust what they say, I suppose, but I'm not. I'm not completely convinced, but we'll see. It's a very thick, very lush lie here to the side. I mean, I'm going to have to try and just avoid the edge of this bunker. So our angle of attack is going to be steeper, just to make sure we get to the back of the ball. Oh, that's popped out not too bad. You can see it's obviously come out left, if that's the, the hosel in action. Oh, oh no, no, it's a disaster. Try to be too greedy. It's come out quite nice, actually. But you can feel there's a definite drag on the clubhead as it comes through, as you might expect. Obviously, this is super lush grass. So let's pop the Mod 1 down. Let's see if the magic hosel makes a difference. That's yeah, come on, not too bad. That's coming out a little bit straighter. I don't know if that's just because I'm more used to the shot. I can't be honest, feeling wise, it feels similar. It's not like it feels this club is slicing through. <sighs> That's pretty good, don't it? <laughs> so I've decided to go in the hardest bunker shot on this hole down here at Reddish, especially with a 54 degree. Now, I have to say, I think Vokey wedges are really good out of the bunker. Also, feels like I can open this up quite easily. Splash that club underneath. It feels like a doddle, to be honest. So if the Mod 1 wedge can be better than this, I'm going to be impressed. Oh yeah, landed that perfectly. Still ended up the same. <laughs> good grouping, great little grouping. So Mod 1, to me, it doesn't look as easy to open up. It looks a bit bulky, but... Yeah, come out slightly lower. See if we can open it up a little bit more. Oh, just on the edge of that bunker there. So with this and with the early testing I've done, if I'm going to be honest with you, this feels just exactly the same as the Vokey. There's no difference there for me. If anything, I'd say the Vokey probably feels a little bit better out of the sand, to be honest with you. Right, 70 yard pitch. That's all I can manage at the moment. Shall we go Vokey first? Vokey first. Let's see the magic. Which is going to be spinning more? Oh, stuck right at the front of the green. I have to say, I think the Vokey still feels and looks just awesome. It really, really does. It has such a noticeably higher fly, it has to be said. Wow, such a bad pull. <laughs> such a terrible shot. All right, Mod, here's your chance. Claim the crown. <sighs> Flight-wise, I actually prefer it today, to be honest, to the Vokey. It's coming out a little bit lower, a bit more penetrating, and spin-wise, it looks more. <laughs> So on average there for the Vokey, we're talking spin around 5,000 reps. That was backspinning at 7,899. Quite the difference. Good distance control as well. 7,779. and 7,555. And actually, accuracy-wise, distance control-wise, better than my Vokies. So obviously with the testing this morning based primarily around this green, I have seen differences in spin on short shots and on the long shots, especially with the Mod 1 versus my Vokie. Now my Vokey is obviously an older wedge, I've had it for about a year now, and the Mod 1 is a brand spanker. So you would expect to see a difference early on in a wedge's lifetime. However, the feeling and the flight of the Mod 1 was actually very, very good. There's no doubt about that. Chipping and out of the bunkers and out of the rough, I didn't really feel too much of a difference. I'd probably say out of the rough that the shots with the Mod 1 did come out straighter, so I do have to give it some credit there. That might take a little bit more experimentation. However, the big question is, 
Are we saying that this wedge is worth $427 when you compare it to a Vogue Q, which is more than half that price? No, but as the rain drizzles down, if you are struggling with your picture, check out this video here. And I'll do a little bit more testing with these wedges, I think, on the sim inside, because quite frankly, this is grim.